long time ago, sneaker technologies were basic and not as exciting as they are today. For example, leather basketball and tennis shoes were groundbreaking, as were track spikes. But sometime in the mid to late 70s, EVA cushioning was born and sports, science, and shoe companies began rapidly innovating. Nike had their waffle sole and eventually debuted air technology with the Nike Air Tailwind. Every time a new sneaker technology was released to the market, it seemed like something from the future. Think of shoes like the Reebok Pump or the Adidas Micro Pacer, which had a computer in it and counted your steps. One of the most highly anticipated sneaker technologies was Nike Shocks. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the history of Nike Shocks technology, but more importantly, we're going to be answering the question, why did Nike's long-awaited Shocks technology fail to capture the market like Nike Air did? Hello and welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian, and my brother Nacho and I make videos on sneaker history and all things related to sneaker culture. So if you're into sneakers, then please consider subscribing to this channel because we make content like this all the time and you're not gonna wanna miss an upload. All right guys, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. As early as 1984, Nike was already experimenting with the idea of placing a mechanical cushioning system in their shoes. Bruce Kilgore, the designer responsible for the Air Force One, designed this mad scientist looking contraption. It was Nike's first step towards developing what we know today as Nike Shocks. After figuring out the perfect formula for stabilization in a running shoe with Nike Air technology, the swoosh set out to figure out the perfect formula for energy return. Shoe companies like Adidas and Reebok throw those words around a lot. Think of Adidas boost cushioning or Reebok's ERS technology. But what exactly is energy return? Well, when a person runs, they distribute energy with each stride every time their foot hits the ground. Technologies like Boost and React Foam take that same energy and redistribute it back to the runner which theoretically can make you run faster, longer, and with less fatigue. Nike designers were moved to create an energy return technology after observing runners on a special running track at Harvard University. The track was made of polyurethane and had a springy nature to it. It took 13 years to come up with the solution. From 1984 to 1997, Nike trialed all kinds of experiments, but finally arrived at placing four hollowed out polyurethane foam columns sandwiched in between TPU at the heel of the shoe. Three years later, the long-awaited Nike Shocks technology debuted on the R4s in the year 2000. The shoe retailed at $160 and created a lot of buzz. The R stood for running and the number four stood for the four shock absorbers on the heel of the shoe. Shortly after the release of the R4, the BB4s were released. Nike tapped the slam dunk legend Vince Carter to be the face of Nike Shocks basketball line. During the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia, Vince literally leaped over seven foot two French center Frederick Weiss in one of the most soaring dunks of all time. Here we are 20 years later watching this footage and I still can't believe he jumped over someone seven feet. Luckily for Nike, he was wearing the BB4 Shocks. This did two things for Nike. One, it obviously boosted sales and two, and more importantly, when you saw Vince jump over that seven foot dude, it made you think that if you had Nike shocks on your feet, you could jump that high too. Nike Shocks presents Athlete Armageddon. Tonight, Vince Carter faces three mime artists with a time bomb. 10 seconds on the clock, the mimes have the bomb. They're playing him like a cheap harmonica. Use the dunk, Vince. He has an explosive first step. Who's your daddy? Oh, that's gonna hurt in the morning. <laughs> the BB4 was designed by Eric Avar, the same dude who designed Kobe shoes when he went to Nike. To me, the BB4 perfectly sums up the year 2000. Everyone was thinking about flying cars and how the future was going to look. The Nike Shocks Absorbers plus Eric's futuristic looking upper make this shoe an instant classic. Nike continued to release silhouettes with Shocks technology. Up next was the Nike Shocks XT, which was a cross trainer that had seven Shocks columns. My personal favorite from the bunch was the Nike Shocks TL. TL standing for total, because the shoe from heel to toe was completely outfitted with shock absorbers, giving you total shock support. By the mid 2000s, Nike Shocks had fallen out of favor with the market. I'm beginning to wonder if it was ever really in favor, especially with sneakerheads. 
Nike's SB program was beginning to gain traction and people were obsessed with the dunks by the time the shocks faded out. One interesting thing I learned from doing research for this video is that Nike shocks actually had a cult following in the UK, thanks in part to it being part of the image of grime hip hop. Shocks had a blip of resurgence with the Comms de Garçon and Skepta collabs, but it just doesn't have the cultural relevance as it did when Vince Carter was dunking on everyone. To try and figure out why the Nike shocks failed, I took to our Facebook group of diehard sneaker enthusiasts. Here's what some of them had to say. They were the worst, not comfortable, no response, and they look like garbage in my opinion. They're only retro as a cash grab. Nostalgia sells sneakers. The pair I owned, it felt like the aesthetics exceeded the functionality of it. And with that said, people wouldn't necessarily wear shocks to the club either. Kind of just felt like a visual gimmick attached to OK shoes. Here's one more. They were mismarketed. The Shox technology originally debuted as new tech for running shoes. The problem is that most runners, especially ones willing to invest in a new sneaker technology, aren't heel strikers. They run on the balls of their feet. So the springs really made the shoes heavy while providing little support near the ball of the foot. Nike later brought shocks into basketball where it performed much better, but the reviews had already set the technology too far back to be saved. Okay, so maybe it wasn't exactly a commercial failure because obviously there's some demand in the market because Nike keeps on retroing shocks. But the overall consensus is that the shoes weren't that comfortable to begin with. They didn't really deliver on the promise of performance or cushioning. Maybe it's because when we all saw Vince Carter dunk on that seven foot French dude, we thought that we'd be jumping that high too. But what do you guys think? Do you guys have any memories of wearing Nike shocks? Do you remember when they first came out? Also, I've linked this video for you. It's a video of uh, Jordan Geller showing off his Nike shocks collection. If you don't know who Jordan Geller is, he is the founder of Shoesium and he's a legend in the industry. At one point he held the uh, Guinness World Record for largest personal collection of sneakers. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And I'll uh, catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, much appreciated. And click on that video, check it out. Peace.